There is, um, in the world of Christianity, there's this, I guess, debate, right? Whatever. Um, about faith and works. And you've heard me talk about this before, but now I'm going to bring it. So, um, when it comes to faith and works, the thought is like, you know, oh, if you just have faith, you're good. Or if you do a couple nice things every week, you know, if you do a few good deeds, you're good. Well, it's just, that's just dumb. I'm sorry. It's not one or the other, and it's, it's just not. And because if we just say, like, I believe in Jesus Christ and, you know, get baptized, and then that's not an excuse to just do whatever we want. You know, we say, like, oh, I got faith, and now I'm going to go do whatever I want because I said that I have faith, right? I mean, that's not how it works. We can't just say we have faith and then do something else. And on the opposite end of the the scale, doing works, another way we can um, hear that being said is, oh, I'm a good person. I do good things. Well, everyone, everyone's a good person. I've, I've never heard anyone say, oh, I'm not a good person. If you've heard someone say that, send them my way because I'd love for someone to tell me that. You know, we all say, he's like, oh, I'm I'm a good person. Who isn't? What does it mean? You know, I had a friend in high school. She was one of my closest friends. And she she hated church and she hated religion and stuff like that. But um, we were talking about it one day. And she's like, like, oh, I'm a good person. Like, what does that mean? And she's like, well, I haven't, like, killed anyone. I'm like, neither do most people. I mean, like, most people don't kill people. Does that mean, like, does it mean we're good? Or what is this, what is good? What does it mean? I mean, if our, if our, if our criteria for I'm a good person is, like, I do a good thing every week, or I did one nice thing one time, or I haven't killed anyone yet, I mean, come on, how low is that bar? I mean, if that's the bar, then it's like, (laughs) What? Because when we do things just one or the other, when it's, oh, have faith, just have it, and then you can do whatever you want, or this other side of the thing, where we just do good things, but we, you know, actually don't do them with any good intention, or we we have no faith behind anything, what's the purpose of either of those things? Faith isn't an excuse to do whatever we want. And saying that I'm a good person and doing good deeds, it just kind of helps us to settle for, like, whatever we are. You know, it's like, are you a saint? I'm a good person. Well, are you becoming a saint? I mean, good is fine, but, like, Jesus calls us to be saints, right? He calls us to go above and beyond, to lay down our life for our lives for our friends. That's what Jesus calls us to do. I mean, anyone can hold a door open for someone. Sorry, that's just true. Now, there's many different ways that one can interpret Scripture, okay? And when I'm talking about interpreting Scripture, we talk about, like, looking at the, at the literal text and understanding it. What does this even mean for me? You know, how do we understand it? What am I trying to get from this? There's many different ways to do that, and there's There's, like, more books written about that than, like, anything else. And when we look at this, when we look at Scripture, and we try and see what we can understand from it, it's pretty broad. So here's one thing that I'm going to give for today. This is just an interpretation, and take it or leave it, okay? It's up to you guys, whatever. We heard in our gospel the greatest commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your being, right? But Jesus doesn't stop there. It's not like period, end of the Bible. He goes on to say, but the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And it's understood that Jesus says, this is the greatest commandment. These two 
He doesn't separate them, but he makes them one, as if one cannot be done without the other. Now, let's look at it this way. I mentioned faith and works, and now we have love God and love neighbor. Let's put them together. Loving God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, with all of our being, the, the whole thing, let's put that in the category of having faith. Having faith can be in the same category of loving God. So like when we love God, we have faith, right? Now on the secondary part of it, when we do works, how do we love our neighbor? By doing works, by doing things for others. Now, as I said, this is interpretation, so this is just one way to kind of understand it, to kind of help it to make sense. When we love God, we're having faith, and when we love others, we're doing works. Now we don't just do one or the other. We don't just sacrifice our neighbor for the sake of having faith. And we don't just sacrifice our faith in God to do something nice for someone. We can't separate them. We can't separate love of God and love of neighbor. So why do we separate faith and works? Because both of them are necessary. Both of them are essential. Those two were not meant to be separated. Those two do the most good, and they bring about the most fruit, and they make the most saints when they are together. And that's what we are called to. We are called to do both. Not to just have faith. Yeah, having faith is great. It's important. Don't hear it. I'm not saying. But don't just have it, and then do nothing else. And don't just do good things and have no faith. They need to be done together. When they're done together, that's how they were envisioned. Being done together. Having faith and doing works. Loving God and loving our neighbor. You cannot have one without the other. So why do we try and separate them? 